Hi guys, as I'm sure many of you have already heard, underconsumption, a brand new concept, kind of, not really, not at all actually, is trending on the internet right now and I wanted to talk about it with you today. I am actually really excited about this trend, but I have a lot of thoughts about it. So we're gonna chit chat while I put on a full face of makeup and in the spirit of underconsumption, all the products I'm using today are some of my oldest products, products I've hit pan on, discontinued products that I still love. So let's get right into it. Since it's going to be kind of a chatty video, I might not explicitly mention everything I'm using, but I will list everything down below as always. So if you haven't yet heard about the underconsumption trend, which has been going around on TikTok and really just all over social media at this point, it's essentially a counter to the excessive overconsumption that we often see on social media. The constant hauls, the constant selling of products, it is romanticizing using what you already have, which I'm all about that. I have to admit, even though I am overall happy about this trend, I also don't think it should be a trend. Like, I think this should just be how we all operate by default, but whatever is going to get people closer to that, I'm all for. But when I first heard about this trend, I have to say I kind of rolled my eyes because this is nothing new. Um, this is not a brand new concept by any means. People have been talking about underconsumption, not just in beauty, but in fashion, home living, in the minimalism communities, in the low buy and no buy communities, in the project pan communities. There have been communities talking about lowering our consumption for the past decade at least online. So this concept is really nothing new, but I guess it is kind of new to TikTok, which is still a relatively new platform. TikTok is very heavy on the consumerism. TikTok Shop is a huge thing. TikTok Live, which is essentially like live infomercials that influencers do on TikTok. Shopping is a central focus of TikTok and not just TikTok, but social media as a whole. So I'm really happy to see the pendulum kind of swinging in the other direction and seeing more creators focus on using what you have. I'm all for that. I'm happy about it. And I think it can be really great for influencers to set that example. There's also the cynical part of me that doesn't really see anything changing as far as hyper consumerism online because at the end of the day, that's how influencers make money. Oh, I tr my skin is peeling. I tried a new moisturizer last night and I don't think my skin liked it. It's from the brand Medicaid. It was super strongly scented and it burned my skin when I applied it. And now I'm getting all this dry, flaky skin. Oh my, mm. that's so frustrating. Anyway, as I was saying, I think it's great that underconsumption is really popular. I hope it continues to be popular. I hope we start to see more project panning and low buy style content over on TikTok as well. Do I think that in the grand scheme of things, this is gonna change anything? Maybe I'm just, jaded and cynical, but no, I don't think so. Affiliate links, Amazon storefronts, Timu hauls, Shein hauls, those are profitable for influencers to promote. And unfortunately, those things are way more profitable for influencers to promote than exclusively low buy content, even though you absolutely can monetize low buy, project pan, and I'm talking specifically in the beauty realm because that's my wheelhouse, but you can absolutely get views and AdSense money from doing commentary about underconsumption, low buys, project pants. You can absolutely monetize that kind of content too, but I, I just can't imagine a world in which underconsumption content becomes the norm at a, at, a, at a larger scale. I kind of see this being a fleeting trend that influencers that normally promote consumerism just getting a pat on the back from their followers for making a couple videos talking about underconsumption and the ways that they participate in underconsumption but at the end of the day i don't see things changing drastically i've also seen some people critiquing this trend saying like this isn't this shouldn't be a trend this should just be the norm this should just be how we all live and i completely agree i i kind of think it's cringe to even call it a trend because this should not be a new concept. This shouldn't be a brand new idea. But I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've also just been watching YouTube for a long time. And TikTok is just kind of following the same trajectory that YouTube did 10 years ago. And on YouTube in the beauty community, we saw this same timeline where it started out being very product focused, very um, haul focused. And then around 2015, 2016, we kind of had this wave of Project Pan. 
shot my stash, low buys, people starting to realize, wow, I've been spending way too much of my money on makeup that I will never be able to use up fully. And so I, I'll call it the low buy community just for short. The low buy community was the response to that. And I think that community is still very much thriving on YouTube. But in the grand scheme of things, low buy content, Project Pan content never really became mainstream in the beauty community. It kind of always remained this small sub community of beauty that I think is still alive and well and thriving. But at the same time, overconsumption has never been more rampant. That's why I kind of don't really see this sparking any kind of big change. But I definitely hope I'm wrong. I'm still happy to see it trending regardless. But will it stick around? I, I guess only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think underconsumption is just a silly fleeting trend? Do you think it's gonna stick in any meaningful way? For my eyeshadow, I want to use a discontinued palette. I can't decide which one. I'm torn between Stoned Vibes and Aether Rose Quartz. Maybe I'll do a combination of the two. I also want to use a highlighter as eyeshadow today. But I'm going to start actually yeah, with my Aether Rose Quartz palette, this matte shade. So the another thing that I find kind of cringe about underconsumption being trendy and cute and people romanticizing it is that most people have already been participating in underconsumption by necessity. Buying less stuff and using what you have isn't just some cutesy trend that now rich influencers are on board with because it's trending. That's just how regular people have had to live for the most part because most people can't afford to buy excessive garbage. There is a part of me that does find it kind of cringy that this is even trending right now. All right, now I'm dipping into Antidote to kind of warm up my crease a little bit from the Stone Vibes palette. All right, now I'm dipping into Hexed, this warm brown, and I'm putting that in my outer corner. Those are kind of my initial thoughts on underconsumption, and even though as a whole, any trend that promotes and even romanticizes using what you already have over buying new stuff, I'm all for. That's kind of the focus of my channel, using your collection, enjoying your collection, the things that you've already spent your hard-earned money on. So th those are the things we should be focusing on using, not what am I going to buy next. Those are my thoughts. I, I, you know, of course I hope it sticks and I hope it changes things online, but I don't know. I think I also have a healthy level of skepticism about the whole thing. Let me know your thoughts on underconsumption down below. But now that I've shared my thoughts, I wanted to share now some of my favorite ways to practice underconsumption in beauty. And I've done tons of videos related to this on my channel in the past. I have a whole series on my favorite ways to repurpose makeup. And so that's kind of my first tip is if you are trying to use and use up what you have before you buy new things, number one, it does take way longer to use up products than you would ever expect. And that's really what project panning taught me. Even though I'm not actively project panning right now, I still try to keep that mentality with my products. One product I'm tr trying to pan on is this Aether Beauty highlighter in Pink Diamond Dust. I have such a big dip in here. The best way to use up your products or even to use products that you don't necessarily love for their intended purpose is to multitask those products. So this highlighter is actually beautiful as an eyeshadow. I'm going to use this as my shimmer today or one of my shimmers anyway. I might be dipping into some more, but this is such a gorgeous, like glistening, sparkly sh uh, shade. It's actually not what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. Today I used the ColourPop Super Shock in Monster, which is a really fun duochrome highlighter. I actually have a pretty big pan in this one, but look at that glow this gives my eyes. Another thing I've talked a lot about on my channel, and this is probably not like a new concept to most of you, because like most of you guys are on board with underconsumption, but makeup and skincare and beauty products are really not finished until the pan is empty. I've seen some people just like throw away products as soon as they hit pan, and it's like, you have so much left. Like, you've only used half of it, basically. When you, just because you hit pan on something doesn't mean it's anywhere close to finished. Also, makeup expires. If you have a product that you love, don't delay using it. I also see people saying like, oh, this is discontinued. Like, I don't want to use it because then once it's gone, I won't be able to get it again. Well, guess what? You're, you're not going to use up that product. <laughs> this highlighter is discontinued and I still have probably like three to four years left 
worth of product left in here, you might as well just use the makeup that you love, even if it was expensive, even if it's discontinued. Odds are you're not going to be able to use it up before it expires anyway, so just use it. Just use it while you have it, otherwise it's just going to sit there and go bad. But like I said, makeup isn't finished until the pan is empty, until the tube is cut open. When I get to the end of this contour stick, there is still going to be a ton left down in there that I'm going to dig out. And the packaging actually can't be recycled anyway unless it has been completely cleaned out and all the product has been removed. I'm going to link below some videos that I've done in the past about how to get every last drop out of your products. But I'm a big fan of repressing powders. Once I get to the very outer ring of this powder, I'm going to repress it and get all of it out of there. Cut open your squeeze tubes. There's usually a ton left over in there. I'm actually going to dip into Stoned Vibes. Take a little bit of Tiger's Eye. This color is actually kind of similar to that highlighter that I just put on. I'm just going to tap some of this in the center of my lid just for some extra sparkle. Oh, I love this palette so much. But the other thing is, makeup packaging can't be recycled anyway unless all of the product has been removed. So whether you're using it up all the way or if you're going to call it done, you're still going to have to scrape all that product out. Recycling, I also am kind of cynical about. I think recycling should really be our last resort when it comes to reducing our footprint overall. I am always kind of skeptical of recycling programs. I always wonder how much of this is even going to get recycled. Speaking of older products, I'm going to take some of Milani Luminoso actually on my cheeks to kind of warm up my cheeks a little bit since I have such a warm eyelet going on. But, you know, recycling is not going to get us out of the climate crisis. Corporations are going to have to be the ones to really change things at a large scale. When you're finished with a product, I still think, you know, you might as well recycle the packaging if you have access to a recycling program. Here in the U.S., there are lots of options. I'm not sure how it works in other countries, but you'll just have to look it up for your region because it definitely differs from place to place, but most makeup packaging cannot be recycled in like your curbside recycling. In the US, there are various different like drop-off sites. I know all Ulta locations now have a packed recycling box. That's where I dropped off a bunch of my empty packaging recently, but keep in mind you have to clean out the packaging um, before you drop it off. So that's packed. They have drop-offs in Ulta locations, possibly other stores as well. I'll link these things below if you're curious. There's also TerraCycle, and I think TerraCycle actually does not require the products to be cleaned out. And I think they have drop-off bins in Nordstrom. I know Sephora stores also have drop-off bins, so you'll just have to look up what is available in your area. But again, if you don't have access to a recycling program, like I said, recycling is definitely not like the end-all be-all of responsible consumption. I really think at the end of the day, it's better to simply buy less and put pressure on companies to do better at reducing waste, because that's really where the majority of waste comes, packaging waste comes from. This JLo Glow and Get It Hydrating Mist, this mister has such a wide range that it covers that most of it just doesn't even get on my face. Like, it's just ending up in the air. I, I, I need a little bit more of a direct spritz. There's something about the sprayer that is just really weird. I don't know why, like, it's not even in my, well, I guess a lot of it did end up in my hair and on my lap. I don't know. I don't get it. It has a nice fine mist, but half of it just ends up anywhere but my face. So I mentioned repurposing products that you maybe don't like for their intended purpose or just multitasking products in order to get more use out of them. I also think it's important to know like when it's just time to declutter something because sometimes, you know, you can repurpose a product all day long, but if you're not if it's not bringing you joy or if it's just not a useful product to you, you're better off passing it on before it gets to that expiration point. So I think, you know, don't force yourself to use products that you don't like, even if maybe you can make them work. If you're just not going to enjoy them or the color is off or something, a lot of times it's better to just pass that on to someone who can use it before it's too late, aka before the thing expires. There are certain things like mascaras that, you know, once you've opened it and used it, you really can't pass it on to someone. I get a lot of questions about how do you know when a product has expired? The technical answer is to look at the period after opening symbol. Every product should have a, well, this one doesn't, so that's great. Um, every product should have a little symbol. It's like a little jar with a lid and it has a number and then the letter M. So this Milani blush 
says it's good for 18 months after opening. Now I've had this for way longer than 18 months and I'm still using it. So if you want to go by the book and follow that, I would suggest keeping a record of when you opened it. So you could put a piece of washi tape or a piece of like masking tape and write down the date that it was opened or just the date that it's going to expire after you opened it. So 18 months from the day that I opened this, that would be the date that I write. Now I, and I know many of you also, enjoy having a little bit of a collection, some options for products. Like I will be the first to admit I have way too many blushes and especially when it comes to powder products, but even cream products, I don't really follow those exact expiration dates because I would never use anything up if I did. I would just be wasting so much product if I did. I, I mean, as much as I would love to be a minimalist and have just like one product in every category and just use up that one thing before I buy something else, I also know myself. I like having multiple blush textures and shades and finishes to choose from. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you can still very much enjoy building a makeup collection. But if you're like me and you aren't a minimalist and have no plans of becoming a minimalist, I think you can still enjoy being a collector while also being a responsible consumer. And that's gonna look different for everybody. It's gonna look different depending on your finances, how much space you have in your collection. For me, you know, I do enjoy reviewing makeup on my channel in order to help my viewers make well-informed purchases. And so I know that's going to result in me having more makeup than I could realistically use up. But if you like to collect makeup, my recommendation would be to keep an inventory. Go through, count all the makeup you have, and set some kind of limits for how many products you are willing to own in each category. And then before you buy new makeup, I'm going in with Bite Stinger today because I am running out of summertime and this is such a summer shade. But set those category limits. I'm actually about to film a makeup inventory video like right after this, so it's fresh on the brain for me right now, but even if you're not on like a strict low buy, I still think it's really important to have category limits for your makeup collection. And this could even extend to skincare, body care, hair care. Before you buy something new, look at what you have. See if there's something you already have that's similar to what you're interested in buying and use that thing instead. If you already have a collection of stuff, you probably already have something that can fulfill that same role in your collection already. You know, there's really only so much innovation with new makeup releases that can happen before things start to get a little repetitive. Oh, that color is so pretty. I love it with this warm eye. Ooh, I really like this look. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. My channel is really all about underconsumption, even though that's not really what I call it or have called it in the past. I really like to focus on using what I have, inspiring you to use what you have in your collection and making really thoughtfully considered purchases when I do make a purchase. So I hope this video inspired you to do just that. And this look was using all old products, discontinued products, products I've hit pan on. Everything I used will be linked below if I didn't mention it specifically, but I love the way this look turned out and you would never know that these products are old, you know? But anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're enjoying my content and you want to support me even further, you can also check out my Patreon or channel membership where I upload an extra vlog and makeup video every month. I'd love to have you over there as well. Huge thank you to all of my current patrons and members, and I will talk to you all very soon in my next video. Bye!